This patient was referred to me for endodontic treatment of tooth number three. According to the patient, tooth started to bother him a few days ago, and then suddenly he noticed that blister, he called it, above the tooth. He went and saw his dentist, and his dentist said, ah, you have an abscess tooth, and referred the patient to us. Let me show you the blister that he was talking about. And here it is. Take a look. So that's tooth number three here, and that is a small buccal part of lesson sinus tract associated with it. So, radiographically, as you can see, that's the tooth here. Look at the curvature of the MB root and look at that large periapical reducency associated with the palatal canal. We discussed options with the patient and patient wanted to try to save the tooth and that's what we did. We went ahead and did the root canal for him in one appointment. So take a look here. Let's go over the clinical POV. Okay, so rubber dam, of course, right here. Let me just fast forward a little bit. Making the endo access right now. I'm just gonna fast forward a lot of this. Endo access. I use a cylindrical diamond and uh, that way my walls, the walls, the pulp chamber walls are nice and smooth. Here I'm using 6% sodium hypochlorite to flush out all the debris and you can see how much debris are coming out. All right, here I'm using my Ultraman Pro by 8 teeth ultrasonic unit and 2% sodium hypochlorite. And I'm just cleaning the walls, getting rid of all the tissue tags, necrotic tissue tags and what have you just to get a nice clean view of the pulp chamber and to get the canals and their orifices. Here my, dentist, my uh, assistant just suctioned, suctioned for him. Here I'm troughing, I'm troughing for an MB2. And I'm soon going to realize that it's not there. We locked out. There was a fin alongside the MB1 canal. There was a fin all along the palatal wall of the MB canal. I could see it under the microscope. Um, I just used a 6% sodium hypochlorite to flush out the pulp chamber and the canals. Right now I'm using an 08, 08 C file in, a, in my reciprocating handpiece. And I realized that my 08 C file goes perfectly to my estimated working length. Again, irrigating with side vented irrigation needle and 6% sodium hypochlorite. All right, I'm going to a number 10 now, number 10 C file on my reciprocating handpiece. And again, it goes very comfortably to the estimated working lengths. So as you can see, when I run, when I, when I run my uh, reciprocating handpiece and a number 10 or any file, but number 10 works better in my M4 reciprocating handpiece at 1000 RPM, I'm not only instrumenting the canals with it, and creating my glide path, but at the same time, it's sonically activating the 6% sodium hypochlorite in the pulp chamber and canals. All right, take a look here. Now I'm using a 31 millimeter number 10 file because the estimated working length for the palatal was 22. So I'm using a 31 millimeter number 10 file attached to my root ZX here and getting, getting the accurate and proper working lengths for each canal. So that is distal buckle now that I'm measuring. <clears throat> and measuring the palatal now. Let's just fast forward a little bit. 
All right, so this video is done. Let's go to the next one. All right, we got the working lengths. Again, fill the pulp chamber and canals with 6% sodium hypochlorite. Okay, so now I'm using a number 15 C file and I'm going to my working lengths determined by the electronic apex locator. Again, take a look. Look at how I use my number 15 C file attached to my reciprocating handpiece. You see that? You see how it's agitating? It's sonically activating the hypo in the pulp chamber and canals. Again, irrigation with 6% sodium hypochlorite after each file use. Copious amounts of 6% sodium hypochlorite. Now I'm using a number 20 flare file. The flare file is a stainless steel K file with a 5% taper. And I just, again, agitate, sonically activate and flare the canals with this file. Let it go as far as it wants to go but make sure I use it in a brushing motion. All right, so I just use it in the MB. Again, I'm gonna, I'm using it in the MB canal. All right, there you go, you see that? There you go, just, just uh, flaring the canal with it. Yep, bye, see you Tuesday. Take care, thank you, you too. Thank you for, uh, for all of this. Great, looks great, thank you so much. The girls clean my room. So nice, so well. Again, you can see how I use the... I'm using it right now in the palatal. The palatal was pretty wide open. As you can see, I'm just agitating the heck out of the 6% sodium hypochlorite. And again, I'm going in with 6% sodium hypochlorite, syringe irrigation. You see how much debris is coming out? So this is my MB, DB, and this is my palatal right there. Look at how all of that, all of that, all of the, that debris that's coming out. Look at all of that. Copious amounts of 6% sodium hypochlorite. I use at least 12 cc's, most of the times I use 24 cc's. Right now I'm using the E-Flex S by 8 teeth to my working length. Take a look here. Look how, how beautifully it goes to basically the working length. Right now here I'm using the orifice opener. And the orifice opener, you just brush with it, okay? You brush with it. Don't, don't force it, brush with it. The apical few millimeters of it, it is very thin, so you can easily fracture it if you put pressure on it. Again, rinsing with 6% sodium hypochlorite. So I've already created a glide path to number 15 C file, and also I use my number 20 flare file in each canal, okay? So that's why I went to my nitite files. You can see how much I use sodium hypochlorite, all right? This is the first, the first file in the series of the E-Flex S by 8 teeth. And look at that, it goes beautifully to my working length. And I'm brushing with it, you know? Look at that, look look at the brushing action. That's it, I just took it to length, to my working length, and I'm done. Done, look at that. And because I brush with it, and I use to no number 15 C file and flare files, really, I can, I can pretty much stop right here. I'm done. I'm done with shaping and instrumenting the canals to desired working lengths. You see that? Copious amounts of 6% sodium hypochlorite. I went to the next file in the series. Perfect, you can see that. It's nice, nice and straight to my working length. And remember, these canals were not straight, but I created a straight, straight path for my nitite files. All right. Again, copious amounts of 6% sodium hypochlorite. It's just all repetition. And here, I'm just going in with my number 10, number 10 C file, and I just recapitulated. And again, 6% sodium hypochlorite irrigation. See how often I'm irrigating with 6% sodium hypochlorite? As often as I can, copious amounts. All right, so let's fast forward here. All right, for the palatal, because the apical diameter of the palatal was larger than I, uh, um, that I had anticipated, I'm using a, I'm using a, a master, master got a perch point for the palatal. For but for the mesiobuccal and distobuccal canals, I'm going to use the injection technique of sodium hypochlorite. For the palatal, I'm fitting because the apical diameter was 40. I'm not going to I'm not going to um, inject uh, thermoplasticized got a 
uh, into the palatal canal because the apical diameter is large and I'm going to have tons of extrusion. I've got a perch and see if I did that. All right, so again, irrigate, irrigate, irrigate with 6% sodium hypochlorite. Actually, I'm sorry, that was 70% isopropyl. And now I'm using, I just irrigated with 70% sodium hypochlorite as my final irrigation. And here I'm using the, uh, the micro suction. And I'm going to dry the canals with sterile paper points here. All right. Drawing the canal with sterile paper points. Remember, this was an abscess tooth, and we were finishing it with one appointment. All right, let's go to the next final. All right, here I'm introducing, I'm introducing a sealer into the canals with sterile paper points, as you can see. Sealer is going in, coating the canal walls with the sealer using sterile paper points, and. I'm going to do the palatal canal first. I dipped the gutta percha point that I custom made to fit perfectly with the tug back to working length of the palatal canal. This is a number 40. And that's my system B. I'm just cutting it with the system B. And then I'm going to use my Buchanan night eye pluggers. This is a number two plugger. And I'm going to condense. I'm going to put pressure on the gutta percha, on the heated gutta percha. I've got a pressure that I heated with system B. Keep pressure on it with the number two Buchanan pluggers. Buchanan plugger, not pluggers. All right, so, and here I'm gonna use the injection injection technique of got a percha. I'm using my Obturator 3 Max to obturate the mesial buccal and distal buccal canals. So no, no got a percha points for the mesial buccal and distal buccal canals. And again, I don't teach this technique because if you don't know what you're doing, you extrude everything out of the canals. And I'm doing the same for the distal buccal canal. All right. Let's fast forward here. And again, I'm going to use my Buchanan plugger, number two plugger, and put pressure on the thermoplasticized gutta percha. When you put pressure on the thermoplasticized gutta percha, you basically don't allow it to expand coronally. So it can only expand apically and laterally. And that's how you fill, you obturate the lateral canals and the complexities. And again, I'm backfilling, I'm backfilling the rest of the canals with the gutta percha gun. And then again, using uh, the number two Buchanan to condense the gutta percha. This is my Optura 3 Max gutta percha gun. It melts the gutta percha. And I'm using it right now in the distal buckle canal to backfill and again, Buchanan plugger number two. And that is done. This is cotton pellet soaked with 70% isopropyl alcohol to remove all the remaining gutta percha and sealer from within the pulp chamber and pulp chamber walls. Then I blow some air, dry it, and sterile, paper, sterile sponge goes in. That's a piece of sterile sponge. And Cabot goes over that. And that's it. We finished this root canal in 27 minutes from start to finish, 27 minutes. And remember, this was an abscess tooth. All right, so now let me show you, let me show you the, the post stop. And here it is. Take a look at the post stop. Everything went beautifully, as you can see, the girls ran out and they were telling me look doc hey uh, you 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 created you created a, a, a sealer art it's like a love like a love love sign people make with their with their fingers all right so you can see everything went beautifully look at that everything went great everything went beautifully that's another angulation everything went beautifully we went ahead and temporized the tooth and referred the patient back to the dentist for the permanent restoration, but this is this is how it's done. This is how it's done. One appointment, 27 minutes from start to finish endodontics, and look at that beautiful bifurcation in the apical area of the palatal. Look at that curvature there, beautiful curvature of the MB root. Perfect. And as I said, there was no MB2. There was an there was a fin all along the uh, the MB canal, but no no MB2. All right, very good, excellent. 27 minutes from start to finish. You saw the 
clinical point of view. Make sure you like, comment, and share.